Hello there, right, another episode, um, working on the Westminster, or bits to do with the Westmin Westminster project anyway. Um, we're going to, or I'm going to try and turn this junk here uh, into an engine test stand, or the starts of an engine test stand anyway. So let's have a look at what we've got. Right, I do apologise because some of my video content does jump around between doing different bits of this project um, but it's just due to lack of parts I mean I was going to try and start working on the engine block and start cleaning it but I'm still waiting for products to do that with so I can't do that um, so just looking around at what I've got I just thought I'd see I, I do need an engine test bed so I do need to build one um, and this is the start of it um, I want it basically made out of things that you that are cheap. I don't really want to be fabricating anything up out of steel because once you've made it, you've then either got to sell it or keep it, or if you keep it, you need somewhere to store it, or if you, or if you don't want to keep it, you end up cutting it up, and it can, can be a, an expensive process. So I'm going to try and show you how to build an engine stand, or well, this is the first one I've made, um, out of things that you can find generally relatively cheap. There will be some items that you... you don't necessarily need but are a good idea um, which might cost a, um, a few pennies but you can get things reasonably cheap on eBay so the basic stand is an old pallet and some old I'm presuming they are trolley uh, shopping trolley casters so it is just a pallet I had a piece of marine ply from a previous project which is just screwed to the top of the pallet and then there'll be various other lumps of wood and bits and bobs to, to, to hold the radiator in place and set the block up to a certain height because I do want to use the actual engine mounts that the engine sits on in the car on the test bed as well um, just to give it a bit more security and, and so it's not solidly mounted to anything just to save on vibration. I've already started on it already. I've started making the dashboard there. You can see the switches and the holes for the, the dials that I do have. Um, bits you're going to need. Oh, there's a uh, a plug for Matt at Furious Driving there. Um, that's another one of my um, automotive cups which just arrived the other day. They are very good quality. Um, and yeah, if you get a chance to see Matt's channel, Furious Driving, he does do some really good reviews on cars. Very interesting guy. So, things you will definitely need if you don't already have them. Um, you're going to need to start a solenoid, obviously start the engine, because that this will be actually going into the car, so this isn't a wasted item, I will be using that. Um, it's a good idea to have a rev counter, so you've got some idea of what the engine's actually doing, RPM wise. I can't remember what I paid for this, I bought this off eBay, I think it was something like 30 quid, um, but it is a, it's a second hand, uh, uh, new unit, but uh, old stock. Um, a pressure gauge oil pressure gauge is a good idea. Um, this is a mechanical one apparently it was working when it came off the, the Jeep that it came from um, so this has an oil line which I have here but um, this will probably end up being replaced but fortunately it does have the old I think they're BSP fittings which might marry, on to, marry up to my block um, so yeah but I might have to get a new piece of pipe or clean this one out so yeah I do have, I do have that um, various bits of wire, um, this extension lead which is two core which someone gave me this will be handy for obviously the sort of lower voltage things like you know running possibly running the fuel pump and obviously triggering the starter solenoid and trigger, triggering the alternator and ignition and stuff like that you can this is sort of I think this is 1.5 mil this will be ample for doing that I'm sure I will need to get heavier cables probably like these for the charging line for the alternator I, they, I may have enough there we'll just have to see how we go I'm probably going to have to get some more and various bits of wood um, I will need a radiator that is the radiator from the car it isn't any good um, it, it leaks like a sieve as you can see I've, I've put these that little Schrader valve test point on there and then blocked up the um, the bottom hose port and put it in the bath at home, uh, well here at home and uh, as soon as I put probably 5 PSI through it um, it just started to leak everywhere so 
I need to get an exchange unit for that. And I do have various other bits of wood and things. Like I say, I'm going to try not to weld anything. I'm trying rather try and make it out of stuff that I can physically bolt and screw together so at least it's unscrewable. I forgot something or two things that you're going to need. Um, you're going to need one of these. You're going to need a coil. Um, and also um, you will need some kind of uh, fuel pump as well to be safe. Right, so I'm not too... I'm probably doing this in the completely the wrong order, but I've never made an engine test frame before. So, but what I'm, what I'm trying to do is just get some uh, base measurements. Um, nothing, well, reasonably accurate anyway. Um, so, what I'm going to try and do is mount the radiator first. Um, but what I do need to do is need to know how high the block is going to sit off the bottom of the test bed. So, the rough figures I've got is, well, so you don't need to know the figures, but I've got a rough figure of how high the block will be off the, the base of the, the test frame with the sump attached because obviously the sump's a big bowl that sits on the bottom um, and then that gives me an idea of roughly where the fan would sit. Now I don't have the water pump attached, I've just put the fan there to give me a rough idea of the diameter of the blades. Um, I'm not too sure whether I'm going to use the mechanical fan or not. Um, the reason being if I, I'm going to put a Kenlo fan in the car and even an electric fan um, which will work off a, off, a, off a heat sensor and hopefully when I come to test this I'll have the fan so I'll be able to rig the fan and see if it actually works uh, via the sensor or sender unit whatever you want to call it that tells the fan to come up with the right temperature I do plan on buying one of those um, uh, I think you can pick them up relatively cheap the, the, the laser guns which you point, temperature guns which you point at things and it gives you a, a, a temperature up on the screen um, so yeah with that I can get the rough dimensions and if for whatever reason I do choose to use the fan at least I know the radiator is going to clear it and there's no chance of it um, hitting or anything like that. Okay so we have some the starts of some support legs for the for the radiator all I've done is just screwed through the existing holes that would hold the radiator into the slam panel of the car. Look at the bodgery love it. Um, so that's the radiator in position um, like I say, I'm trying to make this out of stuff that you can either buy from B&Q or might have lying around the shed. Um, the bottom brackets, I bought these at B&Q, I think, or possibly Audi or Lidl. They were supposed to be for my Land Rover Discovery um, back uh, or boot uh, storage compartment thing I was supposed to build, but that hasn't happened yet, so I've used them, and it's relatively sturdy. It's not, it's not going nowhere. So that's the radiator in. What we'll have a look at now is probably propping up the block and getting it to about the height of where it's going to sit and then fitting the, getting an idea of where the battery is going to go and then where the dashboard's going to go. I'm not going to film stuff as I do it because otherwise you're just going to get a lot of video of me doing stuff fast forward and it'll just be just too much. So I'll just show you as I do it. Right, so what I've had to make um, is this support block um, which just sets up the block to roughly the right height of where it's going to be um, when the sump's on the bottom. So it just gives you an idea of where obviously the fan's going to be and things like that. Um, I don't want to put the sump on now because I don't need to, and I'm just risk damaging it. Um, so yeah, I've just made this up just as a big spacer, just to give me some dimensions. Okay, so I need to move the engine block up onto the uh, support. Um, there's no way I'm going to be able to lift this on my own, it's just way too heavy. So we're going to have to incorporate the engine hoist uh, for safety's sake. And this is just a thing that I knocked off ages ago just for lifting it in and out of the car. Right, we're nearly on uh, the, the support block. But, um, I mean, I'm probably teaching mum how to suck eggs, but if, if for anyone who who's never done one of these before you this is a piece of equipment you're probably going to need for you know most engine rebuilds um 
you just, you just can't live without it, especially if you're working on your own. It's just the, these things are just too heavy to manhandle, uh, not without risking injury to yourself. So, yeah, well worth a purchase. I, th I think I paid £120 for this off of eBay, something like that. You can probably get them cheaper. I mean, I'm presuming they're made in China nowadays, but, you know, they're good enough quality um, for someone who isn't trade anyway. So I've made the uh, support leg for the, the dashboard or control panel, just chamfered the top of that, um, not to any particular angle or anything like that, I've just eyed it up and uh, marked off best as. The same with the, the angle on there, I didn't get a protractor out or work anything out, I just held the two bits of wood together, drew a line where I wanted it and just cut, nothing complicated. Um, and again, using those little steel bendy brackets from Audi or Lidl or wherever I got them from. Put an engine mount on, just to give me, I've only got one of these, but I put one of those on. Um, we'll need a, a block of some kind to go between the base of that foot and the the uh, base of the test bed. Um, the battery's on, and it's just clamped into position with a couple of bits of wood and some screws, just to stop it moving around. Start a solenoids in position, again, just a couple of screws, nothing fancy. And just got to put the uh, coil on. I'm going to mount it there for now, which gives me a, a relatively short run for a HT lead to the uh, to the distributor. And the dashboard. Um, all I've done is drilled two screw holes um, for it to screw into the top of the the support, and just countersunk those to make it at least flush, so it's not rough. Uh, the switches I already mounted before, um, all I'm going to have is, I, uh, I presume all I need really is just going to be either ignition <clears throat> on that one, fuel pump on that one, and start on the push button on there. So all I've got to do now is screw this to the top of the, the support stand and fit the two, two gauges and and fit the coil. Well, not looking too bad. It's a bit of a bodge, but I bet those real professional engine places have one just like it. Well, well that doesn't look too bad. Gauges are fitted in there, and the coil is screwed into position. And it is, again, just screws and washers, so I've not made any brackets or anything like that. It's just nice and simple just some screws so what I now need to be looking at is a support block for the mount to sit on I need one for the other side as well but I don't have the other engine mount at the moment that's with the car at the unit um, and I'll also have to make some sort of plinth or block to sit under here to support the weight of the engine to stop it tipping backwards so that'll be the next things to do. Right, so I've got the um, bits for the engine mount supports. And all I've got, um, I'm running out of wood now, so I'm just using what I can find. So I've just got these these pieces. Um, I'm not too sure what size they are, probably 20 mil by 60 or something like that. And these, this bit of um, uh, square, square wood. And all I've done um, drilled a pilot hole in the end of these, drilled a, a hole for the screw to go through in that, so it's actually a, it's a, it's a larger hole. And the idea is, is we will just end up with that on there, pretty much like that, and that on there, like that. And then the engine mount will sit on top of here, ideally It'd be nice if I had a, a, a wider piece of wood, um, but I don't have any left now, so I'm, it'll be strong enough, it'll be fine, I hope. <laughs> There's the engine mount uh, block or um, plinth or whatever you want to call it in position. I've made one for the other side, but I don't have the, the engine mount, it's not here like I said before. Um, pretty much the just drilled, pre-drilled some holes with some screws in the bottom. I won't position it yet. Um, because I may need to move the engine slightly um, forward and back 
um, so I won't screw it down yet and <clears throat> I'll just be using 8 mil bolts just two of them and that should be enough I hope and now we're just going to make a plinth or block for the back just to support it which will just sit underneath the uh, the bell housing plate there I think we're getting somewhere um, I've just made up this block and shaped it as best I can to the bottom of the bell housing plate so that will the engine the, or the rear part of the engine will sit down on that um, so that's as good as I can get it for now I do need some more of these little L brackets which I'll put by the end of that just to secure it uh, I've made it so it's tipping the engine slightly forward so it sits better on the on the engine mounts there because it was slightly wonky um, and these will obviously when the when the when the block the the big block that's holding it up is out this engine will drop probably about half a centimeter I expect I may have to pack it up we'll just have to see but I've left plenty of room for the sump at least at least two centimeters to play with so it should fit under there um, so there, there we have it. Not bad for something made out of uh, essentially junk and uh, bits of wood. That's not too bad, I don't think. That's quite good. For me, anyway. Right, um... I can't do much else on the engine stand now because um, I've essentially run out of parts. I need I need bits and bobs for the wiring. I need some connections, battery terminals, and blah blah blah, all those kind of things. So I can't do that right now. Um, so I just thought, being as we're making stuff out of crap, I thought I'd show you something else that I've made out of crap. Um, a little while ago, or well, quite a while ago now, um, I've I've got a, a Land Rover Discovery. That's one of my other projects, um, and I needed to do change the oil in the gearboxes and diffs and transfer case and so on and so forth. Um, dra draining the oil out isn't really a problem, you just pull the plugs, drain it into a container. It's getting the oil back in again which is a bit of a pain. Now sometimes you get the bottles that have the little spike, the, like, the little tube at the top and you can, if you can get those into the diffs that's fine but sometimes in other cars and stuff it's quite awkward trying to get into the side of the gearbox and things like that. And I think it is a bit awkward on the, uh, on the Discovery to get into the, the side of the gearbox if I remember rightly. Um, and I thought, well, I'd look around, and you can buy these ones that you pressurise with an, air, an airline, and they, you put the oil in the bottle, the air goes in, it pushes the oil out. Um, but they're quite expensive, and I didn't want to spend that kind of money on something that I'm not going to use that often. So I made this out of basically what I had lying around in, in my van and in the house. And all it is is a plastic container. So, if I unscrew the lid, and you do have to screw the bottle more than the lid, it's just easier. How I made it was pretty easy. You've got the plastic lid at the bottle. You do, 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 need to drill two holes in it, one for this item here and one for this item here, the black item there. So that's pretty obvious what that is. That's a tyre schrader valve from a, from a wheel of a car. Um, I was given these by a, a tyre fitting place um, a little while ago, but I'm not saying that every tyre place will give them to you, but I, I happen to have these from another project, but I'm sure if you went to them you could probably give them a couple of quid and they'd probably give you a few. Um, so you need them, um, or one of those. That's a cable gland for putting cables into steel boxes and fuse boxes and stuff on buildings and houses and so on and so forth. Um, and then this here is just a piece of plastic this is what I, I can get hold of this stuff, but you could use something else. It's a piece of plastic airline. Now, I think it's 12 for 2, but you could use something else, like a piece of copper pipe or anything. You could use, there's something, you could find something else. It doesn't have to be that. Um, and then, because this is a cable gland, when you when you unwind that nut, there's actually a piece of like a, like a rubber gripper in there. Unfortunately, when you push this tube in and put the nut back on, it grips it like this is a cable. This was a cable. It grips it like this was a cable. So that's quite fortunate. Um, and then on there, I turn that that way. You've got the backing nut for it, which you need to put on. And then this here, this nut and sort of hose tail here, 
I've got a feeling this was one of those funny airline fittings that you get with stuff when you buy it that doesn't always look like anything we use in this country as far as I know. Um, so it, it was just a useless air fitting that, I, that fitted nothing that I've got. So essentially I've used it as like a, a hose tail. Um, I've put what I had to do, because the, the cable gland is smooth on the inside, it's not threaded and, and the fitting was, I just covered it in Loctite and basically forced it in, made it cut its own thread into the plastic good jollop of Loctite so it go off, let it go off so it set hard and then pushed on this piece of braided rubber tube which is just cheap, I'm not sure it might be just food grade or something like that but this, this rubber tube I think it might be half inch um, rubber tube with a just a cheap Jubilee clip which I had lying around and that's it and then all you then needed to do was fill it with oil obviously, put the cap back on, turn that in there if you can see that so it's easier to turn the bottle. Put the cap back on. You don't have to go mega tight with the lid. And then the way I controlled the air supply was I've got one of those little cheap plastic um, air compressors which you keep in your boot of your car, uh, which run off the cigarette lighter. And that's got a little toggle switch on it. So all I need to do is clip that on the, the, the tire end, or the tire filling valve, whatever you want to call it, onto there, plug it into the cigarette lighter, I was then able to, the cable was long enough that I was able to lay underneath the vehicle and I could just control how much pressure was going to, onto this by the little toggle switch. Um, and it works really well. It's actually quite good and it costs practically nothing. So it's, it's amazing what you can do. Just an air of caution on this though. Just, I mean, it's uh, probably, it's common sense. This is, this is not a, a pressure vessel. This is just a plastic bottle. Now I'm sure that the really expensive ones you buy the workshop ones probably have a, a relief valve or something like that and so you can't overpressure them obviously this doesn't so when you're doing it just caution obviously when you pressurize it just watch the bottle expand a little bit just give it enough pressure so it starts pushing the oil out stop the air going in give it a minute let it go down then do it again and that's how i did it not not that this bottle would probably go pop because what i did on purpose is um the we'll say on purpose the 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 top of the the lid in here or the inside of the lid once upon a time had a paper gasket in it which I had to remove to get these in now because I've removed it that means the seal between this lid and the bottle was really poor so all the time you try to pressurize this it's not it just leaks like a sieve but it holds enough air for it to get the air in and push the oil out so it kind of self-regulates itself fortunately because um, it does blow up quite well um, but yeah just remember that this isn't just be caution if you're going to make one you need to you know somehow regulate your pressure not bad for basically a couple of quid. Beat spending 50 or 60 quid. I've got my SO cup today. Mm. Well I think that's going to be it for this weekend. Um, I do apologise for the video in earlier that it was all me holding the phone because it's in my camera phone because it's just not possible to set up the tripod every time I don't have the room in here um, so it's a little bit uh, a little bit tight for space so we've got something done this weekend I've actually had some wet and dry arrive some heavier grade wet and dry so I'm going to carry on with polishing up that rocker cover and we'll see how that uh, comes out so yeah and have a well have a good rest of the bank holiday weekend and I'm hopefully I'll catch you maybe next weekend but I think I'm working so I'll try and get something sorted out for a video Okay, take care. Bye now.